Hello and welcome to Code with SAR. Hi, I'm SAR. How are you doing today? In this video, we're going to talk about Android file system. Now, this is not a lesson about the operating system. What I'm going to show you is how to code against the file system of Android in order to keep building CodeMK to support mobile platforms. And the technology that we're going to use is Xamarin. Again, I'm going to stick with the real project experience. I'll start with the, how the files got written in Windows. Then I'll quickly compare the differences between coding against Windows versus coding against Android. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you some code. I'm also going to show you how to use the device file explorer that comes with the Android Studio to observe the file system of the simulator. And we both get some feelings about how to code file I.O. on Android. Let's get started. For those new to the channel, this is how Codename K looks like today. We have a WPF application on Windows up and running. On the left part of the window, we have a category list and the BFMS what could go wrong category. We could do basic functionalities like adding a data point, and then it will show up on the chart. The data points will be saved to the file system, of course, and optionally syncing them back to OneDrive by your choice. We are going to talk about the save the file today. So let's take a look at what happened when I added the data point just now. Quick recall, we have one folder for each category. And the special characters like the question mark, they are encoded. Within the category, there are files. And each file is a container for a data point. Let me sort the files and by the date. This is the file that I just created. And the information for the data point is in this file. So today I'm going to show you how to write code to do the same on Android. But before that, let's uh, go over again what we did in Windows so that you can see better how the code is reused on both platforms. And when we're talking about writing physical files, this is the data access ledger's responsibility. So let's start there. It looks like this data repo class is for writing data points as well as categories. By going through the implementations, it looks like we have a local path service to provide a base path. Now this is a critical. Please remember this and you'll know why later. For now, let's follow local path provider and see where does the base path come from. It looks like it comes from the local store options. And the local store options is an I option. And based on I options pattern, we understand that it's either coming down from the default value or from a configuration provider. So an educational guess is that the value is set by add options in the registering phase for dependency injection. Let me repeat this because this is important. The value of the base path is set here by the add options. And when the user to add something, a data point, a category, doesn't matter, it's based off this base path. With this, let's dive into today's topic, coding with the Android file system. As a developer on the traditional platforms, Windows, Linux, there are usually APIs to manipulate the whole file system. All the files are almost always treated equally. Special folders like documentation, picture, music are very weak concept. You can put a picture in the music folder, no problem. Also, it almost feels like any app could access any file on the file system. On mobile platform, we are usually way more constrained. I don't think it's too hard to understand, like there's way more privacy information on the mobile than on a PC. At the beginning to coding with a mobile system, it is very important to change the mindset. Depends on the nature of the data, you might want to put them in different parts of the file system. The first thing to understand is what are the options Android, logically, divides the file system into internal storage and external storage. Files on internal storage could be accessed by the OS itself and the app. And when your app is uninstalled by the user, the data there would be removed along with the application. There's also a size limitation for the internal storage. And then there is external storage. Just don't confuse this with the SD card or any physical devices. Think of it as a logical partition. And then there's two types of external storage private external and public external. The private external storage is dedicated to the application. No other application could access the data in it. In other words, you can't share the data in the private external storage with other applications. And when the app is uninstalled, data in it will also be gone. So roughly, the only difference in between the private external storage and the internal storage is that you could put larger files in it. Now, data in public external storage, on the other hand, they could be shared by different applications and they won't be deleted when the user uninstalled the application. So those are generally three options that we have on our hands. 
the how this partitioning protects users' privacy? Well, to begin with, by default, these folders are isolated apps to apps. One app cannot access another app's data, and that's guaranteed by the operating system. The only exception is a public kernel storage, and that is protected by the permission. It requires the user to explicitly granting permission to the application so that it will be able to access the public external storage. Permission granting is an interruption of the user's working flow, so it's designed that way to push more apps to leverage internal storage or private external storage as much as possible. Now, based on that understanding, where should we put the data points for Codename K? Firstly, I don't think we need to share the data points with other applications. So we're not going to pick public external storage, right? In between the internal and the external private, I am leaning toward the private external because there's no file size limitation. Of course, it's uh, still constrained by the hardware. But anyway, let me try to write file to both places and decide by the end user's experience. We were pretty far down the road about the Android file system access, in theory. Now, let's take a look at the implementation. Like I mentioned earlier, the technology that we're going to rely on is Xamarin. There are two levels of APIs, Xamarin Essentials and Platform-specific APIs. Xamarin Essentials are like a common part of APIs on Windows, Android, and iOS. It's one of the easiest API to use. We also get least functionality. Platform-specific API is more powerful but uh, of course, more complex to use as well. Since I am still in the explore phase, I'm going to try it on both APIs, starting with the Xamarin Essentials. There's actually only one class that matters, that is the file system. Let's take a peek at the documentation. There's a property named app data directory. It says it uh, gets the location where the app data can be stored, but it is not very clear to me like which storage is it used. Is that the external public, ex external private, or internal? There is this Xamarin uh, Essentials doc. There we have some platform specific information. And then it links to the official doc. I'll put the links to the description. And let's find out what happens when I follow the doc to write the code. So what you are seeing here is an Android application. And here I'm trying to determine what will be the base path. Then remember the code we read for Windows. We'll give this local store options to local path provider. And it will, in turn, provide path to category repository or data point repository. In the example, to create a category named what can go wrong, and then add a new data point. And all the code there will be reused. On the side, we will eventually reuse the business logics as well. We're not there yet. The key for now is to figure out the base path. And that could be as simple as a file system dot app data directory. Let's set a breakpoint and see what happens. Here, let's note down the vertical path that is the slash data user zero com dot company name dot code name k dot joy dot file uh, slash files. So that's on the internal storage for the app. That is the storage that is dedicated to the application. There's no permission needed, but maybe size constraints. And that is the file system helper in Xamarin dot essentials. That was easy to use, but lack of options. Now let's take a look at the Android specific API. The first one, the same internal storage. There are actually two APIs that could be used. System.environment.get folder path. This one will return the absolute path directory as a string. And the application context the file dir to return the java.file.io object. And we then can fetch the absolute path object on it. That will effectively return the same file path. Let's run a debug session in the simulator. As we all can see, base path equals base path 2 equals base path 3. Now let's see the real reason to use the platform specific API, that is to access the external storage. I'll firstly try the private external storage. That is uh, through this uh, get external files dir method. It takes in a string of type. When given no, it will point into the base path. That is what we want at this moment. And we want the string of absolute paths. Now let's debug.
So it is different. And how about public external storage? Since that is shared by all the apps, it is in this Android OS environment namespace. Oh, and actually for this one, type is required. We fix it quickly and restart the deployee. Okay, you can see the external path, oh, external public path, I have a typo there, goes to storage emulated zero documents. So that is the shared place for all the applications. So those are the APIs to access Android storages. By debugging the code, we messed the file system up a little bit. It is easy to try and learn if we could see what we did, right? Presumably, there should be a file explorer. To my surprise, this one got me for quite a while. And I finally figured there is a device file explorer along with the Android Studio, and that is not a standalone utility. To be honest, I am frustrated. But I'm going to show you quickly how do I run Android Studio so that I can leverage the device file explorer. Step one, download it. I'm picking this uh, Node.xe installer, and I assume the other one should have a similar experience. Now once downloaded, we go to this bin folder and run start.bat. It looks like it requires a path to JRE. So I go to Visual Studio, Tools, Options, Xamarin, and uh, here is the path for JDK. Well, it's a super set for JRE, so better, hopefully. I'm coming back to set the environment variable. I actually tested it. It could be any of them. Now let's try start it again. It's working. And here's device file explorer. Let's use that to inspect some of the storages. I'm going to go over the different storage locations, like the internal, the external public, and the external private. Another caveat is uh, that it will not show any hidden files or hidden folders. So don't name your folders or file names uh, starting with the dot, at least not for debugging. If you find a way to show those files though, leave a comment and let me know. For the next video, I want to look into the logging for Android. It is so essential to any debugging, especially in a new environment. If you haven't, take a look at my other video talking about iLogger and keep coding, keep improving. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.